everybody, it's Teresa here from the UK. I hope you're all keeping warm and you're all very uh, well. In this project, we're going to be looking at sashiko and making two sashiko scarves. Now, this on the screen is nothing to do with what we're actually going to be doing. So that's quite confusing, but I will show you the scarves um, later so you can see exactly what we're doing. Well, I hope the weather with you is nice and kind. The weather here is absolutely dire at the moment. I went out earlier on. I nearly got run over, actually, by a car reversing who didn't see me at the back. Um, my friend shouted, and this uh, the car stopped only an inch away from me, and this, this very young man looked out and he said, Sorry, sorry. And, um, oh, bless him, I felt like his mum. And I said, that's okay, no damage done. But it was pouring out. We got soaked. So um, <clears throat> it's still raining now, and I, once it starts raining, though, it, it generally doesn't stop for a while, as all you all sewn up as in the UK know. But anyway, let's move on. We're going to look at Sashiko. Now, um, we're going to do this because I'm actually involved in doing it in another project and I thought you might all like the opportunity to have a look at it. Now, it's very, it looks very much like slow stitch, like running stitch, but it has rules that slow stitch doesn't. The rules are stitches don't touch and in areas like this, um, the stitch goes underneath, un right underneath to carry on, no overlapping, no touching, although I can see there's a stitch there touching and maybe one there, and the gaps between the stitches should be half the length of a stitch. So, um, yeah, it does seem like there's a lot of rules, and it's traditionally it's white thread on blue background but um, in these contemporary times that it's also worked in colour now the sashiko dates from about the 17th century and it was used by very very poor working people who were restricted by colour uh, the use of colour and um, they weren't allowed to wear certain colours because they were very poor and brightly bright colours were um, just worn by rich people and uh, people of the upper classes if you like so these poor people were restricted and their clothes I read had to last about three generations now in order for them to make their clothes last I mean those amount of years they had to keep repairing them and they repaired them with these little running stitches. Well, over time, they actually develop their their own patterns, and um, they're very, very beautiful. It is a beautiful art form. Um, it was to uh, strengthen their clothes to make them last, but it was also to keep them warm, especially in the rural areas where it used to get really, really cold. So there's a, a great, rich history to sashiko. Now it can be done with a long needle and the project that I'm about to do is being done with a long needle and it's a sashiko needle but you don't have to have any specialist needles really. The sashiko needle is about three inches long, you can get them about two inches as well and they're that length and you can load up the needle but when you use the sashiko needle you pleat up the fabric and push it towards your needle so the fabric does the work and not your needle but I do give you a warning it is totally addictive it really is addictive I'm not used to working with rules I don't like rules generally in my artwork or my textile work um, you know I'm more vegetable bag and lace and net and just having a good time and just seeing what happens but this does have rules. Although, as textile artists as we are, <laughs> I've said it before and you know what's coming, we break the rules, okay? So if you don't want to call it sashiko, don't call it sashiko and do your slow stitch, okay? So, because I think 
mine has probably verged off. Spirit willing, spirit willing for Sashiko. <sighs> Body weak for running stitch. Okay, so on that note, we're going to start at the very, very beginning with transferring our pattern. Okay, so how to transfer the pattern to fabric. And at long last, here's the scarves. Before just before we start, I just want to explain that because I want uh, quite a short video, that I'm running the two scarves side by side. So instead of doing each scarf one at a time, I've decided to do a bit of one and then a little bit of the other. So just to warn you, in case you think you've missed something, that I will possibly be alternating how I construct these scarves. Okay, so one minute you might see this one and then I might switch to this one. Alright, so I hope you don't find it confusing and I hope it's okay. Um, if you don't like it, I won't do it again, but I just think it's going to save time and make this a lot shorter. All right then, so we will now move on. Now the first way of transferring your design to your fabric, and this is probably the easiest way, is by using a white transfer paper. And it's like the old carbon paper, um, I expect you can still get it actually, where um, if you remember the black carbon paper, uh, it was smooth one side for drawing and the other side's just a little bit tacky uh, and that's the transfer side. So what I will do is place down my, my fabric now bearing in mind that the scarves are much, were much longer than this so I would have had them hanging over the edge of the table then put the shiny side down over the top like this and this transfer paper is absolutely wonderful you can use it and use it and use it I mean I don't know if you can see this has still got life used in it and if you can see all the lines on there this must have been used probably about six times and this um, but because I'm filming this I've used a fresh piece it's A4 size and it's not that expensive so I was really impressed but anyway so we have our fabric down first then the paper the car um, the transfer paper and then our design now the designs I got on the internet I just put in free printable Sashi Co um, designs literally and I came up with a lot of free designs now please make, make sure if you do this that they are free printables because of copyright this was most certainly a free design which I enlarged so I'm going to pop it that way now I did put an arrow here because on this there is what I consider to be a top and a bottom because um, the bottom's different and it was all to do with joining placing one on top of the other but it really doesn't matter so now this goes on top so now the transfer paper has been sandwiched between the fabric and the design. Now I'm go just going to clip these on the table with some sellotape. Now the best tape would actually be masking tape uh, but I can't find it so I'm using sellotape but being careful not to go too much onto this design because as you know when I lift it up I'm bound to tear something. So that is now ready to transfer so you will need oh shut up up there so you will need a or a straight edge preferably one that you can see through then you can see your lines and you'll need a biro okay um, maybe a sharp pencil with a nice point but this is the actual pen that I like using now all we are going to do is copy the lines. Now the easiest way to do this is to do it in straight lines. So I'm going to start here, around the edge first, down the line here and 
do it in straight lines. Now, when you're working with this hemp leaf, you don't go across the circle bits. You stop at each circle. So I'll just carry on with the straight lines here. Stop at the circle. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so you know what I'm talking about because I think my hand is possibly in the way. Right, so I've just done that piece. Then from the other side of that circle to the beginning of the next, you stop and just carry on stopping at all the circles. And we're going to carry on and do the same all the way down stopping at the circles until we get right down here stopping at the circle down there okay so then we're going to choose another straight line and I'm going to go for this one and we're going to do the same I prefer working that way stop at the circle see that stopping at the circle each time and then you move along and this is so nice to do it's almost um, cathartic and of course if you're alone and it's quiet it can be very mindful too and maybe we all need a little bit of that at the moment um, I know I do with the uh, time we've had recently, is it any wonder that some of us have been walking up the walls? But that's another story. <laughs> now, if you use a different colour pen, you'll be able to see where you've been. Whereas, if you use a black pen or even a a dark blue pen you're not always going to be able to see the lines where you have been and that one right so let's go for we go for oh let's go for this one so all the way down And by doing it this way, you keep all the lines straight. And any wonky lines, you can straighten up as you do this. Like that one. It's a bit wonky donkey, isn't it? Right, so we're... So we go over here. And this is how you actually do your sewing in lines just like this the idea is to move across from one corner to the other I mean that's how Sashiko is done but um, you do it to suit you Oh, this feels really good. I'm going out shopping after I've done this, and um, I can see already that I really don't want to do that. I'm doing a troll at the charity shops with my friend. I just love the charity shops, not for clothes. Um, sometimes I'm not always off the peg, so that's why I have no problem wearing second hand clothes. But um, I'm a bit of an unusual shape. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not always off the peg. But it's the fabrics that I love. You never know. And the bits and pieces that people throw away. Wool, bags of wool and buttons and um, 
Lots of lovely things like that. But I can see that if I do this for much longer, I'm going to switch it off and um, I won't be going anywhere. <laughs> Um, right now, um, have I missed? Ah, missed the line there. I'll put that one in freehand. Right, ah, I can see one there as well. Does that mean I've missed? Oh, yeah, that means I haven't missed just one line, I've missed that row. Right, let's have a look now. Do, 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 do. Now, the best thing about this is if you do miss a line, you can always just pop it in. Right, so we've got the moment of truth coming up now. Let's have a look. Yep. Right, so the next thing to do then is very carefully remove the sellotape. I'm going to make this a bit smaller now, so close your eyes. Okay, I'm going to remove the sellotape very carefully because I'm going to want to use this again and then if I use this again I will use a different colour pen to go over the pink so it would be okay to use black or blue then now look even that looks lovely doesn't it now by looking at that I can see if I've missed any lines that one looks a bit where am I that one looks a bit short I don't think it's going to matter too much, to be honest. Um, right, moment of truth. Ta -da! And there we have the design. Now, this um, will gradually wear off. So, if you're going to do a, a, a repetition of a design, just do it block by block because like the scarves if you do i had three blocks on this on this blue one i had the three blocks i just did it block by block because if i had to, did it all in one go by the time i finished that and then finished that this one would have worn the third one would have worn off okay because I'm not sure what that is, but it reminds me of chalk. I mean, it's lovely. Look. It's lovely and sturdy. But handling it and handling it for a couple of hours at a time, it will eventually wear off. Uh, it's not permanent. It will rub off and it will wash off. But that is the easiest way, I think, to transfer your design. Okay? But there is another way coming up now. So another way of transferring our design to our fabric is to use tissue paper. Now as you can see, this is just from an old dressmaking pattern. I picked up this pattern for about 25p in a charity shop. And I'm sure there were pieces missing, but it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you can see through it and it's nice and sturdy, which it is, that'll do, that'll do nicely. So I'm going to secure the tissue paper to the pattern together now there are different ways of doing this as well I prefer to pin mine just to hold it down so I can see through it and it stops the pattern walking underneath now if I were to use um, a more detailed design underneath I would probably sellotape the whole lot to the table to the work surface so I would put down the pattern here I would put that down and then I would actually sellotape this down in place and that way you'll be able to pick out all the little designs and you won't be worried about the pattern underneath walking now I don't need to do that because this is a large design underneath it's not that detailed and so I feel quite quite confident that just a few pins here and there will hold it in place so that is now done and I've done that with one two three four five six pins yeah six pins and I'm quite happy now that that is in place okay now it's all straight lines so I'm going to use a ruler to 
to make sure I get the straight lines. Now when you do this, um, be careful what sort of pen you use because if you use a felt tip pen, something like these, these bleed. So when you put your marks on your paper, um, like, like that mark that I've just done there, it bleeds and it makes the line thicker. So it doesn't give you a true representation sometimes of the lines that you're using. And not only that, if you use something that bleeds like this, and then you put this onto your fabric, while your hands are getting damp or sweaty, um, there's a likelihood that you might start rubbing this off onto your fabric. So I would avoid the, f the felt tip pens, okay? in favour of rather nice biro here i wouldn't use a blue biro either for this so be very very careful about what pen you do use nice fine pencil would do as well but for the sake of making the video i'm going to use this pink which i use anyway to do this because it just works out nicely so i will be pressing hard on this so that you get an idea Oh, well, actually, so you can see what I'm doing. Why right, is that? Yeah, that's coming out. So I'm going to go all the way around the edge first. To mark the edge here all the way around. Lovely. Yeah, you can't see that, but it is, it is there. Now I'm going to do all the lines going down first. Now it doesn't matter if you do them all across. It doesn't matter how you feel comfortable doing this. You do it your way, okay? Some people might want to follow the lines round, up and down, but I like to do it a bit more methodical than that, which is unusual really, because I'm not that methodical when it comes to <laughs> my work. As you know, I do see it all as an art, and I do like an element of freedom when I do it. But when, no, but doing this, I like to be just a little bit more precise. So I'm following the lines down all the way and as I'm going if the pins are sticking in me or sticking in the way of the ruler I'm going to pull them out. So stop where the lines meet and you get this round shape. If you can manage to hold down this side of the paper with your free hand if you like and just very very carefully twist your ruler and it does help at this point if you have a ruler or an edge that you can see through right so having said I'm going to do all the lines down I got carried away there so just do it to suit you okay now this is going to take a few minutes so I'm going to carry on and do this so here we have it finished. I've taken the pins out as I've gone along. Let's just pop it on some white paper. And there we are. Now any lines that you can't see, just go over right there. Just go over them to suit you. But I can see that fine. So I'm just going to trim around the edges now. Just get rid of the excess paper all the way around like this now when, if you use dressmaking paper just be aware that sometimes until you get used to it the lines on the dressmaking tissue can be a bit confusing so if you can choose areas where you haven't got a lot of interference like this it does help but if you can't manage to get your design onto an area without without the printed instructions then turn it over because that does help it just mutes that that line a little bit right now there we are now I'm going to fold this in half um, make sure you've got your right side up whatever um, let me see I have on this actually put an arrow there to denote which way I want this going up and it is that way so I'm going to fold this in half 
like that okay so now I know the design is balanced if you like and I'm going to take my fabric and what I've already done I've made see my fabric here my white very nice pretty fabric I have creased well I've actually ironed a crease in half like this half the fabric it's in half so this is one two three four five six seven eight two four six eight inches across so that is in half now I'm going to place my design this way okay I'm going to put the fold to the fold fold to the fold and then I'm going to pin it so now I know that I've got the same size either edge either edge should be about an inch and if I just move that over slightly yes yeah that lines up perfectly with the inch markers there now I'm going to pin that start with the corners making sure that you've lined up the two folds here okay now this needs to be quite secure as before now this transfer is on top of the right side of the fabric so this fabric is the right right side up which really when you think about it makes perfect sense doesn't it now that is secure so it's time to start our sewing now I did have a needle threaded up already there it is right. so time to start our sewing I've got six strands of embroidery floss so what I'm going to do because we're working with a transfer I'm going to put a knot just one little knot inoffensive knot in my thread the back isn't going to show so the knot isn't going to show and it's very slight so I'm going to start here and work towards the other corner now I'll turn that round so it's facing you which means it's on the side for me and just the little stitches so think grain of rice grain of rice then half that grain of rice for the gap grain of rice half that grain of rice I mean you will get into a rhythm the more you do this and it's just so so lovely now don't forget unlike slow stitch this the stitches don't cross so we've got there to a little junction okay little junction there and then we're going to go in now that will be a little hole there a little decoration so then we're just going to find the other side of that little hole and start again all the way just as we did before all the way down a little bit of recap there for you grain of rice and looks as if my grains of rice are turning into spaghetti so <laughs> pull back a little bit a grain of rice half a grain of rice that grain of rice now I'm going to carry on and do this all the way along okay and then as soon as I've done this one I'll get back and show it to you okay this is great that took about 50 minutes to do it was quite a nice task to do I'm listening I was listening to the TV but it's done now so the exciting part now is to pull the paper off now the only problem is using the tissue that sometimes it gets caught under the stitches and it's a little bit difficult to pull out so a pair of tweezers could be quite um, a useful little tool to have 
on your table at the moment when you do this now if you pull a stitch you see this here I've pulled that out too far and all you do is go to the back and just pull it down pull it down again and if you think it needs securing then afterwards when you've done this just go to the back and make sure you haven't got any loose ends that you haven't pulled out any knots um, create therefore creating a little bit of a weakness and there we are finished that one that's looking quite good I did turn to the back and I corrected some of the stitches like this big one here that just needs pulling through a little bit like that so that one's done now what I'm going to do here I'm going to put another one on top of this one so I've marked this one did I mark this one as top hmm, no I don't think I did let me just find which way yes that way I'm going to put this one there and do exactly the same as I've done here and then I think I'll probably try another one so I'm just going to make this a bit smaller mm. uh, yeah lovely so I'll I'll end up with three of this design on this piece of fabric and we'll have a look and see what it looks like so there will be three all the way along there so I'm going to carry on with that and I'll get back to you later and here they are now let me see if I can get these into the screen that way yeah I think it goes better this way and I have the three designs here there's one there two and the last one three so that's looking that's looking quite good isn't it it looks better this way it, it looks like three distinct designs um, and I, I like that I quite like that so that is that one it's interesting to see the red on the white um, instead of the white on the traditional blue background but that is that one and I will carry on now and see what we come up with I've repeated the the basic pattern the basic design here seven times along the piece of fabric so I've ended up with a scarf or the basis of a scarf which is 47 inches long right the way along here by approximately six and a half inches this way now to me because I love color it looks very flat some of these aren't perfect either that you can see these rounds they're not perfect and another thing um, I haven't actually matched where the designs meet it was a bit difficult to do that so I have literally just flipped the design and moved it and um, this is why there's that almost chev chevron design there in the middle where and that is just where the designs end one ends and one meets now I'm not too sure whether I like it just red it looks too flat I love red but it just looks too flat for me so what I'm going to do is outline this in green I've used green because red and green are complementary colours as you know so the effect should be quite startling so it's going to take some time but I'm going to start here and just do exactly as I did to do the first row of the first part in red now it isn't going to be seen so I am going to use a very very tiny knot if you can see that and I don't think you can because it's so small I'm going to start here and as before I'm going to work from one corner down well I'm going to follow that line actually because that just makes it easier okay. so I'm going to use the principles of Sashiko stitches won't be touching 
and I won't be crossing over and it just the running stitch all the way down so um, I imagine that I'll be doing this for some hours but um, it, is, it is very nice to do it's very mindful as well especially if you're you're by yourself um, it's just restful lots of time to think maybe sometimes that isn't a good idea but I'm going to carry on with it anyway and uh, as soon as I you got something to show you or even finish it depending on how long it takes I'm guessing this could take um, let's have a guess I reckon this could take it was an hour f about an hour say for each panel it wasn't quite that much so seven seven hours it's not going to be that long because there's no paper pattern involved I'm estimating it could take five hours four and a half to five hours okay so I'll get back as soon as um, I think I've done it actually so as soon as the sassy coat was done on the bottom pieces here I sorted out some fabric and it's from my daughter-in-law's dress <laughs> um, another one of her dresses and I've cut a strip exactly the same length as the length of the blue scarf now the uh, video went went wrong so I've actually sewn this up and the video didn't take that is why it's already sewn up so what I did I put right sides together so right sides of the lining the back of the scarf to the right side of the patterned work so the two right sides are now inside and I pinned all the way around the edge all the way around except for what will be the back neck I've left um, normally about four inches yeah four inches just so my hand can go in there and pull out the corners so it's like a long bag um, then I've trimmed all the way along all the way round I took quite a lot off actually that is what I trimmed from around the edge so um, I gave it a good old haircut then I snipped in the corners snipped these corners but not touching the stitching uh, what else did I do ah oh, and in some areas I had to go over it if you look here if you can see here I've had to go over this to straighten up the lines and I did this with a ruler and a white pencil and I drew now this isn't straight because I've done it so it doesn't matter but if you can see there by using a white pencil and I believe this is just an ordinary crayon I'm sure it is might be from my drawing set but I think it's just an ordinary white crayon so a white pen uh, crayon mark all the way and I've me measured it with the ruler and I've got a nice straight line and then I machine sewed along it but I did need to do that twice in some places okay so now it's been machine sewn all the way round all except for the little bit here which I'm calling the neck for me to put my hand in and pull out the corners either end I really should do this first shouldn't I off camera just to make sure there's no problems oh my hand just about comes out of there oops oh I thought I might have split that then so that is one side out and then we we'll pull out the other side here and there we go so the scarf has now been pulled right the way through through that gap Ooh. right so here we have, have it at the moment I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger there's a bit of glare up there isn't there so right I'm going to slide this along so you get an idea of 
Um, that may be too big, so I'm going to make that a bit smaller now, <laughs> just to give you a headache. Right. Now, if I line this, this up with one of these lines here, so I'm going to line that there, then this line, this one, should fall along that line. Yes. Can you see that? It looks as if one of the, the ends might be out slightly, but all that... Is perfectly straight so that's good so obviously this is the front this it will be one of the front pieces and then this will be the long piece and then we have the gap here somewhere where it will go round the back there's the gap so that needs to be over sewn there and that is the second edge the second side this will need to be pulled out just pull the corners out I should do those properly in a minute and press them so there we have have it at the moment okay now I'll turn that round two long pieces there and the rest of the scarf now I'm just going to show you the back as well now bearing in mind I haven't pulled the corners out properly yet I, I will do that at the ironing board and press it so and that is the back with the daughter in laws dress I must take a picture of this and, and put it on there what, what's that going <laughs> I say spot your dress so there we are front and back okay I'll make that smaller now and you might get a better oh no it won't go any smaller so there we are now the next thing i'm going to do is to press this all the way around and make sure the edge the seam is on the edge all the way around i'll pull the corners out as well give it a nice press and i'm going to over sew the gap here and we've done all that before and all that is i should pin that you see look it folds not naturally along there where the seam is so I should pin that and then just some tiny little stitches over sew it now if after I've pressed it I decide that it needs some top stitching um, I might top stitch it oh this is difficult isn't it I might top stitch it or I might not but anyway that's, that's about half an hour away so first thing I'm going to do is to press it all the way around the edge and over sew the gap and then decide whether it needs to be over sewn or not so I've given it a nice press and I've closed up the gap that was round about what I'm calling the neck I can't even see it yeah so that's closed up neatly and it's finished but um, I think I'd like to give it a little bit of a fringe I'm not going to top stitch it because um, I think dark blue thread would wouldn't look nice it just wouldn't look nice and white thread would just get messed up amongst all this hand sewing so I'm going to leave it as it is but this polyester cotton here um, it's just um, polyester fabric I mean it's nice and firm so I can't see any problem I can't see it being too too weak and flimsy it's sitting just lovely so that the scarf is actually finished but what i will do i'm going to put a little fringe around the edge and i'm going to put the fringe about every maybe quarter of an inch or so along here now i'm going to do this with some blue thread but it's no point me showing you on here because you wouldn't see it so I'm actually going to do it here so on the edge right we we'll imagine this is the edge of the oh, sorry we we'll imagine this is the edge of the scarf okay so double thread now my my edging will be two inches long so I'm going to cut a piece of thread four inches long like that so when I put it in the needle and bend it over it works out at two inches so I'll have 
a fringe of two inches all the way along here. I'm going to come through from the back like this, taking the needle out and all I'm going to do is knot them. I'm going to knot them together, two knots, just like that. Now there's several ways that you can do this but this is the way I'm going to do it and I think it will give a nice a nice effect. So I'll just do that once more through from the back okay right so you want to hold one hold one thread so you don't pull it through take the needle out just make sure they're about the same length and knot it and it's a very very simple but effective fringe and there you go okay there you go so um, I will do that now along the end of these with my blue thread and as I say I want these two inches long so my thread is four inches so I if I start in the, I'll start in the middle I'll start here and hopefully you'll get to see me do at least one make that bigger so take that out of the way so I'm going to hold that thread there just hold that so I don't pull them both through right pull one through remove the needle and just knot it making sure it's as even as you can get it I mean the best thing with this is that you can always trim it and there you go the first one okay so I'm going to carry on and do that on both ends. And the tassel's finished. So they've all been placed on, um, as I showed you my preferred method, and um, evenly spaced them as much as I could. Kept them roughly within the same length. There's a little bit of discrepancy there with the length, but that doesn't matter. And not only that, you can easily tra uh, trim them with the scissors. So there we go front and back there's the back um unfortunately this is as good as it gets but this is so long that i just need to bring it up um and that is the completed scarf okay so i hope you enjoyed it i just want to say that this was a really nice one to do these ones are more difficult because you have to get the centers um nicely matched if you like that was easy as well so it's a really nice thing to do but if you are a slow stitcher you can do this in the way we do our slow stitch um, so i'm just going to show you this one finished i've backed it now there aren't any tassels on this one you see i've backed that and i have top stitched this all the way round so i'm calling this one finished now it's a very short evening evening type um scarf just to go around the neck and finish just around the chest it's let's see i'll tell you how long it is it is whoa. 38 inches long by six inches wide so there was quite a lot of trimming to be done around the the sides before i pulled it into the right side so i'm quite pleased with that that is done and dusted now i'm not so that's the two scarves finished now i really hope you enjoyed that and i hope you give it a go because it is just so restful and mindful to do um as i said earlier on in the video just by yourself in the quietness or with some nice music in the background um and just get totally absorbed in what you're doing it really is good for the mind especially in these sort of chaotic hectic times that we've all lived through and so far you know we've made we've all made it um if we listen to this <laughs> so um 
yeah, do give it a try. And let me know what you think as well. Now, I'm aware at some point in this video that the microphone uh, lost its volume, and I do apologise for that. Sometimes my uh, microphone reverts to the PC microphone, which is um, a little bit of an inferior quality to my standalone plug-in microphone. So I'm really sorry about that, but I'm aware that it happens on some of the other videos. But getting back to this, I've enjoyed this, um, and I hope that you've enjoyed it too. So I'm doing a follow-up video, the Sashiko number two, and that will be a very, very brief one. But I'm delivering um, a lesson on this at some point next month, I think. And this is one of the things we'll be making. Okay, now I just thought I'm going to run you through it too. All right, um, it would be lovely to see some of you, um, some of you lovely, lovely people face to face. But until the online lessons are up and running, then um, the most I can do is just give you a little bit of an offering of what goes on elsewhere. Okay, so this will be Sashiko part two, I think. Sashiko part two, but I'm going to keep this very, very short because you now know, you know the basics of, well, you, you know how to do it now, okay? There aren't any more secrets to it. You can even do this in slow stitch. There you go, which that is, that is. Right, so anyway, take care and um, be good to hear from you and thank you again for your lovely comments. And if you haven't subscribed, could you please subscribe? Now, a friend of mine told me to do that, and I feel really uncomfortable saying that. <laughs> so if you didn't like that, just ignore it. Okay, now, take care. Keep safe, everyone.